Good morning. It's good to join you today. Uh, today we commemorate, and the church commemorates, Toyohiko Kagawa, renewer of society who died in 1960. Uh, I have a couple of announcements. First, make sure to watch for Ruth's word of the day. Uh, she posts it every morning, so you can respond to that. Secondly, uh, our contact information, you probably saw it in the slideshow before, but just in case you missed it, there it is again at the bottom of your screen. You can contact us if you have any needs, any, any, if you need help getting groceries or anything like that. Uh, we'll be glad to assist you. Uh, I am very happy to be with you today to talk about uh, Mr. Kagawa. Uh, he's a very important uh, renewer of society, a Christian in uh, Japan, especially during World War II. So, with that in mind, we will begin. Let us pray. Lord God, you planted in your servant Toyohiko Kagawa a fervent desire to relieve the misery of the poor and to establish in the social order the justice, love, and peace of the kingdom of God. Give to your church, we pray, such selfless compassion that we may find joy in the service of others and bring the light of hope where there is resignation and despair. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, so, if I can turn back here. So, uh, Toyohiko Kagawa was born on July 10th, 1888 at Kobe, Japan the son of a member of the Japanese cabinet and a geisha girl. He was orphaned at the age of four and was raised by his father's wife in Awa. It was an unhappy situation. He left to live with an uncle and enrolled in a Bible class to learn English. At 15, he became a Christian and consequently was disinherited. With the help of missionaries, he studied at Presbyterian College at Kobe from 1905 to 1908. After a near-death experience, he vowed to dedicate his life to serving God's children in the slums. From 1910 to 1924, with his wife Haru, he spent all but two years in a six-by-six-foot hut in the slums of Kobe, called Shinkawa, the worst slums anywhere in the world. Wow, that's saying a lot, isn't it? If they were the worst, you can imagine. In 1912, he organized the first labor union in Japan among shipyard workers. From 1914 to 1916, at Princeton, he studied social techniques to relieve poverty and misery. In 1918, he founded the Labor Federation. In 1921, the Farmers Union. He was arrested during the race riots of 1919 and the shipyard strikes of 1921. He worked successfully for universal male suffrage. Universal male suffrage. It's about the time that in the United States we're looking at universal uh, suffrage for men and women, but for, for men here, um, not everybody, I, I guess, had the right to vote there. Not every man had the right to vote, which was achieved in 1925 and for the modification of laws against trade unions. Um, just on another note, that was the case in the United States at its founding. If you, if you remember from American history, the only ones who had suffrage in the early United States were white landowning men. In 1923, he was asked to supervise relief and social work in Tokyo. He organized the Bureau of Social Welfare and his writings drew the attention of the government to the appalling conditions in the slums. He insisted upon a reorganization of the economic structure of the world to realize the Christian ideal of social order. In 1928, he founded the Anti-War League. In 1930, he began the Kingdom of God movement to promote the conversion of Japan to Christianity. You have to understand how radical and how... Uh, sub potentially subversive and provocative this was. 
especially since in Japan Christianity had been outlawed from the from the about 1620 to to about the 1860s, uh, and that it was only after Japan was forced. Uh, Commodore Perry had a ship in Tokyo Harbor and base, more or less forced the Japanese to open up. Uh, that Christianity was was not uh, outlawed anymore in the in in Japan. Um, so you have to, and this is at the time that Emperor Emp em, Empire sponsored Shinto is beginning to really take hold in in Japan. Um, the emperor is seen as a deity. And, and to be fair, uh, in Shinto, lots of things are said to house the the gods, the kami, a K A M I. But this is uh, this was this must have been super provocative. He established credit unions, schools, hospitals, churches, and visited the United States five times to gain support for his projects of social reform. In 1940, he was arrested for apologizing to China for Japan's attack on that country. Uh, just a quick note on the Second Sino-Japanese War. That was probably that was a bloodbath. That was a massacre. Uh, that there there is just ample evidence of, especially if you look up the the rape of Nanking, uh, just how brutal, uh, how brutal that was. Uh, so, in 1940, apologizing while it's still going on is would have been seen prob as, as downright traitorous. In 1941, he was one of a group that went to the United States to try to avert the coming war. He returned to Japan in September 1941. During the war, his pacifism and his patriotism struggled against each other, and he became militantly nationalistic. After the war, in poor health, he led the effort to adapt democratic institutions to Japan. He died in Tokyo, April 23, 1960. He is commemorated on the German Evangelical Calendar of Names and the Calendar in the Lutheran Book of Worship and Evangelical Lutheran Worship. We'll read our psalm, Psalm 57, together. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my shadow, my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to, the, to God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. I lie down among lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen in it into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So you notice that I put in the glory be in that, and that's something that I will start to do. That obviously isn't part of the psalm at the end, but it is a common Christian way to end the psalm.
Our reading today is from the book of Romans, from the letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Know if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our reading is from Love, the Law of Life by Toyohiko Kagawa. <clears throat> My soul, whither wilt thou flee, and where wilt thou find an oas oasis in this parched, loveless waste? Where wilt thou find a spring of healing love? Search thou not for the springs of love in the deep valleys, nor yet may they be found in the bosom of another being. Thou art wrong to try to quench thy thirst for love from another. Thou must seek love in thine own breast. The spring of love must well up in thine own heart. Therefore I do not lose hope, nor do I fear when I see this drought in the land. I shall dig down deeper, still deeper into my own soul. I shall dig down to the God who is within me. Then, if I strike the underground stream that murmurs softly in the depths of my heart, I will tenderly cherish this oasis of the soul, and to it will I lead a few thirsting comrades. My real experience of religion came when I entered the Kobe slums. Everything in the slums was ugly, the people, the houses, the clothes, the streets, everything was ugly and full of disease. If I had not carried God beside me, I should not have been able to stay. But because I believed in God and in the Holy Spirit, I had a different view of life. And I assure you that I enjoyed living in the slums. With active love and, with, and the love motive, every moment was full of joy. Because I felt that the Holy Spirit of the Heavenly Father was living inside me, I was not afraid of anything, not of the many repeated threats from pistols, swords, ruffians, not even from the infectious diseases which infested the slums. My job was to help these people. I had free access to their homes, and so knew even more about them than the doctors. For me, prayer is very real. If you pray with selfishness, it will never be answered. But prayer for the sake of God and for the love of your fellow men will surely be answered. A gambler, dying, said to me that he was going back to his Heavenly Father. Then, for the first time, like a flash, I was convinced that any man, even the most depraved, is able to get grasp the idea of Jesus Christ. Okay, here is our hymn for the day. I think I'll just la it first. I'll la one time through, and then we'll sing it. La 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 la
la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la where restless crowds are thronging along the city ways where pride and greed and turmoil consume the fever days where vain ambitions banish all thoughts of praise and prayer the people's spirits waver but you o christ are there in scenes of want and sorrow and haunts of flagrant wrong in homes where kindness falters and strife and fear are strong in busy streets of barter in lonely thoroughfare the people's spirits languish but you o christ are there with bombing and fierce burning your people find no peace help us to share their yearning that senseless death may cease break through our ease and comfort forbid that we not care and strengthen all our efforts for you o christ are there o christ behold your people they press on every hand bring light to all the cities of our divided land may all our bitter striving give way to visions fair of righteousness and justice for you o christ are there let's pray for the church for the world and for all of those in need for the church in this time where we have to be more creative in bringing the word of of the gospel Bless our efforts to bring the gospel into people's homes in, a, in this new day. We pray for a renewed spirit of love for all people. We pray for those who lead, that, that you would guide their, guide their work. We pray for the poor, the outcast, the forgotten, the sick, especially those suffering from COVID-19 those who put their health on the line every day for our benefit, and for those who, do, who have lost their jobs or whose small businesses are in danger. We pray for peace throughout the world and among the nations. We pray for reconciliation of peoples and nations, for laborers, and for those who work among the poor, the diseased, and the unemployed. Finally, Lord, we pray that you would bring us one day to the feast that has no end, along with your servant, Toyohiko Kagawa. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, as you can see, I'm still working out Proclaim and how to use it, but thank you for your patience. Um, 
May God bless you this day and always, and I will see you back here again tomorrow.